Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where usually we have one really big story, but this week we have a plethora of smaller, but yet so fascinating stories. There is so much for us to unpack at the box office, and just wait till you see what we have to discuss when it comes to streaming. Oh boy! But I, I want to start with DC League of Super Pets, which might not have had a super opening weekend, but I don't think it's as bleak as some people are trying to paint it. I think the reality is most moviegoers realized it was strictly a family movie, but even more so, a family movie for people with very small children, uh, who were delighted, apparently. Very strong audience scores. And there was little crossover to teenage and adult fans, which is what powers other animated movies to, to much bigger openings. But, you know, DC Super Pets opened on par with two of Universal's recent animated films, The Bad Guys from DreamWorks and Sing 2 from Illumination. Now, I don't think that DC Super Pets will perform as well as Sing 2, which is a jukebox musical, a sequel no less, to a very successful movie, and it has a big repeatability factor because of the musical numbers, etc. But let's see if it can match the bad guys, which came very close to the century mark at the box office and has been doing extremely well on digital. Uh, now get this, also DC Super Pets is incredibly well positioned. There are no animated movies for the rest of the summer, so DC Super Pets could have a steady flow of families and maybe even some desperate DC teenage and adult fans who, who are like, you know what, maybe I will check it out in theaters. Because it's so hot right now, we're having a huge heat wave across the entire planet. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But you know, you get that big fizzy soda, some popcorn, you sit back in a recliner. How bad could the movie be? I think it's pretty bad. But as I said, the audience scores are strong. So if you, I didn't think I would like to see Super Pets going in. So if you look at that trailer and go, I think I would enjoy that, maybe you would. So it's got all of August to do that and have audiences trickle in, and even through Labor Day weekend. And get this. There's not another animated movie hitting theaters until freaking Thanksgiving with Strange World from Disney. That's ridiculous. But DC Super Pets will be on HBO Max way before that. It's not going to play until Thanksgiving. And I think on HBO Max, it will soar. That streaming service desperately needs more babysitting content. A cornerstone of Disney Plus's success. You just turn it on and walk away. I, I mean, you know... It is what it is, and it's very successful for Disney Plus. You know, they opened the vault and they and they and they destroyed the com the, the lock. It's open forever, which I don't know. I think there was something about you know not having it being always available, which made it a little more tantalizing. But anyway, look at what's always trending on Disney Plus uh, supposedly, and you can see that a lot of it is babysitting content. So I think that this could be actually very good for HBO Max. Maybe they really sh certainly should make that spin-off series that the movie is clearly setting up. Because again, the audience scores for DC Super Pets are excellent. People who thought they would like it did. Uh, the only thing that's odd is that the diversity demos are not great for a Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart movie. You would think the diversity demos would be so much stronger. I think if DC Super Pets had played up its very diverse and progressive take on the Human Justice League, it would have done much better. Not only bringing in a more diverse crowd, but I think teenage and adult DC fans would not have been able to resist. I mean, they showed pretty much all the good human uh, Justice League scenes and jokes in the trailers, but I, th I thought they were great. They were one of the best parts of the movie, in my opinion. I would, I would return for more of that Justice League, and I didn't even like the movie. So let's hope that Dwayne Johnson takes that note to heart uh, as he, if he decides to make a sequel or continue with this brand. And I think that he should consider it. I think there's clearly something there. As for the rest of the box office, unfortunately, a lot of moviegoers are saying nope to Jordan Peele's latest movie. I saw it again this weekend. I still loved it. I went with two people. One of them didn't get it for most of the movie, but at the end was like, oh, that was pretty good. And the other person hated it, as I know some of you did. But I got to tell you, the reason I bring up seeing it is that the trailers that played in front of the movie do not do it any favors. There's a lot of really highbrow, confusing, downer trailers in front of it, and it just doesn't make it seem like a good time. And there's too many of them. I think that they should have had more upbeat, fun trailers in front of that movie. Uh, so, so anyway, I think it would behoove people who make movies and release them to experience what they're putting out there and what it's like to actually go to the movie the way it's been set up, including the movie, the stuff that rolls in front of it. And they would maybe have a better idea of the mistakes they're making. But Universal made another mistake, which we'll get to in a moment. But 
while Nope managed to fall less than 60% in its second weekend, very impressive for a horror film. Uh, I don't really think I would classify it as a horror film, though. It's more highbrow than that. But anyway, it's pacing way behind us. And it's neck and neck with Get Out, but Get Out had really long legs because it was Jordan Peele's breakout movie, and a lot of people discovered it week after week after week thanks to phenomenal word of mouth. At this rate, we had, I had hoped that it would break the pattern of 175 domestic for Get Out and Us. At this point, I don't think it's going to even make that. I don't think it's going to make that, which is really shocking and disappointing, not just because I like the movie so much, but because it's Peel's most expensive movie to date, and it looks like it's going to bring in the least amount of money. And I don't think Universal helped it very much with a very odd and frustrating global release strategy. Nope is currently in only one movie market right now, one big movie market, and that's the United States. And it won't really expand into any other big markets until mid-August. Not even the UK until mid-August. That is weird. At that point, all the spoilers will be out there. So many of you have complained about this, and I hear you. It's ridiculous. Plus, at that rate, Universal could be dropping Nope on digital soon in the United States, you know, because it's losing money so quickly at the box office, and that could lead to piracy. Now, sure, one might wonder if maybe Uni would not do its 20 to 30 day surprise digital release strategy, considering the movie still has to open overseas and that would lead to piracy. But at the rate that Nope is dropping, and the fact that August is a pretty slow month, you know, after, you know, not this week, but like towards the uh, mid and late August, Nope could do very well on digital. So we'll see what they decide. But what we know for sure is that Universal pretty much made Nope's overseas box office prospects DOA. And that is, I'm sure, very frustrating for Jordan Peele. And I know a number of you who are fans who wanted to experience this with everybody else. That's, you know, in today's world of social media, the world is so much smaller in terms of communication. You know, it's, it's a small world after all you got to drop this stuff globally. You know, you can't really do those kind of rollouts anymore. People feel the party's over, man. I strongly suggest that Jordan Peele join a franchise, which he has been really reluctant to do. But I think it's time, because a franchise has built-in appeal to rely on, and it could get his numbers back up. And I think he's an incredibly talented filmmaker, and he would do great if he picked a franchise that really appealed to him. Um, he might want to follow the age-old Hollywood advice that he put in his own movie. It's a line in his own movie, and that's do one for them so you can do one for you. Peel really, he's been making them all for him because I think he assumed that, that was also for you, and that's a great place if you can be there, that the ones for you are also for them. But that's clearly not the case, so he needs to make one that's for them. Uh, although, you might always tank a franchise's built-in appeal, which isn't a good look either. Just ask Taika Waititi, as Thor 4 struggles to get a 7 in front of its global uh, total. Ah, some are arguing that, hey, without China, that's pretty good, man. But look, No Way Home and Doctor Strange 2 didn't play in China, and they're doing really well. They did really well, right? So is this just a Marvel tone problem? Is it too jokey? I preferred this movie to Multiverse of Madness, but I didn't think, I mean, I really did not like Multiverse of Madness. Did Multiverse of Madness benefit that much from writing the coattails of No Way Home and Wanda stands? I think it did. But anyway, I'm, I'm really, Elizabeth Olsen, I hope that her agent is paying attention to this and is really making a pitch for them to do. I'm like, come on, do some stuff with Wanda. I mean, these are, these, all these other announcements are nice, but as many of you are saying, what are you gonna do with Wanda? All right, but one also has to wonder if this is maybe a Disney problem because the mouse now has two divisions that are suddenly faltering. Divisions that it never seemed would falter. Oh, just wait till we get to Nielsen. Just wait till we get to Nielsen. All right, but first, look at Top Gun Maverick Go. Wow, 10th weekend, still just a 20% drop and still in the top five. And sometime this week, it will surpass Jurassic World, the original Jurassic World, and likely freaking Titanic to take the seventh spot on the all-time domestic chart. Oh my God, I love that movie. It deserves that. Tom Cruise deserves that. I don't think it will break the all-time top 10 worldwide, but it's like in the mid tw top 20. It's, it has a very respectable standing there as well. It will be very interesting to see what happens with Tom Cruise's next movie, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, part one. Does he have a whole new franchise, a fan base? Is that, has it expanded while well, you guys stick with him? I, don't, I mean, I think, you gotta, you gotta admire Tom Cruise's, you know, professionalism and artistry. Uh, what a guy. And I love the Mission Impossible movies. I'd love to see them blow up. I don't think they make enough money considering how good they are. I saw the last one three times in theaters. Oh my goodness, it was so good. And also, what other classic hits 
might try to make a comeback in a similar manner. For instance, some people laughed at Reese Witherspoon's comments last week about how it inspired her, Top Gun Maverick inspired her regarding Legally Blonde and the potential of bringing that back. But it was a clickbaity headline. What she really meant was to see how cleverly Cruz and his team mix nostalgia with newer elements of filmmaking and storytelling that are popular today was inspiring to her as a businesswoman. Because, you know, she's just as much a business person as Cruz is. So she's th thinking, okay, don't just bring back a beloved franchise, but evolve it so that it mimics a lot of what's popular today. That's very smart. And Witherspoon's very smart. Don't forget, she gets paid more than $2 million per episode of The Morning Show, and she's done a whole lot of other TV where she, where she also made a lot of bank, and where the crawdads sing has actually made a decent amount of money. Who'd have ever guessed it? Reese Witherspoon would have. That's why she made the movie. But B.J. Novak could be a little smarter. The Office star wrote and directed a starring vehicle for himself, which barely managed to open in the top 10. However, if he cast a bigger name in the starring role, Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher is supposed to be his big draw. Issa Rae is also in the movie. They should have played her up instead. I think she's a much bigger draw than Kutcher. But anyway, if B.J. Novak had written himself a strong supporting role and next to a bigger star, I think he'd been better off at launching a film career for himself as an actor and as a, a writer director behind the camera. You know, shoot for the stars, BJ, shoot for the stars. You aim high because that way, even if you're a little lower than your target, you're still pretty damn high. Uh, I think right now he kind of hurt himself in every p p position that he's auditioning for in the movie space, actor, writer, director. The audience scores also are meh, so that's not going to help him. But, you know, he can keep his fingers crossed that maybe it finds an audience on digital. But I'm sorry, I just don't think B.J. Novak's a big enough star for people to click on him. And I don't think Ashton Kutcher really is either. So he needs a clickable face in that cast. And I guess he's not a producer, because a producer, I think, would have realized that. Or his producer should have told him if he didn't. All right, let's head over to digital with Nielsen, where we always start our, our, our conversation, and it's, oh, it's fascinating today. You can see that with the drop of part two, Stranger Things season four is back on top with a vengeance, thanks in large part to two extremely supersized episodes. The final episode was two and a half hours. Oh my goodness. Uh, while Umbrella Academy, in its second week here on this chart, is holding strong right behind it. And Chris Pratt continues to be a huge draw for Amazon. I think that the jury is still out on what his box office draw is, but I think that for Amazon, he's, he's super hot. He's a huge draw. I mean, Amazon must be like, please sign a huge deal with us to make content for us. He is an Amazon star for sure. His new series dropped for the 4th of July weekend and even outperformed The Boys, which has far more episodes, but thankfully was right behind it. So Amazon is looking good. And so is Hulu. Only Murders in the Building, very nice debut there for that, for that show. And The Bear also placing in the top 10. And it's very impressive to see the Upshaws be so competitive considering how little advertising it gets from Netflix and how little attention in the media. But that, that has a very strong audience. Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu. Who's not here? Oh, fascinatingly, no Disney+. Plus. Obi-Wan is totally gone from the top 10 after wrapping its season. No afterglow. And Ms. Marvel has not risen back into the top 10 yet. Star Wars and Marvel content was supposed to be an instant slam dunk for Disney. And now that's not the case. Are they overexposed? Is it a lack of quality? What's going on? I'm sure many of you have opinions on that. You're welcome to share below. But this is fascinating. All right, also, HBO Max still, since joining Nielsen Ratings a few weeks ago, has not been able to get a single show into the top 10 originals. I'm really curious to be to how long it's going to take for them to get one in there and what it will be. And also, as some of you pointed out, I believe that HBO content doesn't qualify. It has to be an HBO Max original. And that's just even more ridiculous. And that means it's going to take even longer. Yikes. All right, so over in movies, Sing 2 hit Netflix with a bang. While Multiverse of Madness is still generating solid traffic for Disney+, Plus, not spectacular, but solid in the second week on the streamer. Let's see how Thor 4 does on Disney+, Plus, and also Lightyear, which is about to drop on the streamer this very week. Uh, over on Netflix, uh, here's The Gray Man's debut, and it is strong, right? We're over on Netflix's charts for just last week. It didn't break any records for the streamer, but still... I can see why they want to continue with it. I'd bring the budgets down for sure. I'd be like, what's, can I get a cheaper gray man? Uh, but I think that there's certainly maybe at least something here to try one or two more outings. Uh, the Sea Beast and Persuasion are also still going strong. As is Kevin Hart's The Man from Toronto. Perhaps Hart and Johnson 
are a bit overexposed, and that could be hurting Super Pets as well. I wonder if it'll be a problem for Black Adam to have Super Pets, uh, Dwayne Johnson DC property come out so close to that film. Um, and also, even beyond overexposure, no matter how lucrative his Netflix deal is, and I suspect it's very lucrative, well, you know, I don't know. This is a choice that Kevin Hart has to make because I'm sure he's making a ton of money over at Netflix, but I still think he has a movie career. I thought he still did, but he seems to have totally switched his live action content over to Netflix. And he, he, if he's not careful, he's going to become thought of as just a streaming talent. But maybe that's fine. Maybe it's, you know, he's just getting so much money in that regard. Who cares? I mean, he has another movie dropping on Netflix at the end of this month. I mean, the end of August. That's incredible. That is like, real. let's see how it does. But that, if it does well, as well, if it does well too, you know for sure he's going to be making a lot of money from Netflix if he isn't already. And looky, looky, over on series, Virgin River is back, baby. And again, not only is it number one, but it tops Stranger Things 4 in its debut. I mean, I have no idea who's watching that. I don't know anybody who's watching that, although I believe some of you have mentioned it, right? Uh, but there are a lot of you. There are a lot of you. Stranger Things season one through four are still going strong, though, while Umbrella Academy burned brightly, but quickly, as it's almost totally out of the top ten after just a few weeks. Although Stranger Things did have its expanded season, and, you know, they're not doing a weekly release, but maybe this thing they did with Ozark and Stranger Things of a part one and part two, maybe that's a good halfway, maybe that's a good compromise. So they don't do a weekly release, you still get to binge, but they at least get to expand the interest in the show and keep it alive in the conversation for a bit longer. Hmm, hmm, interesting. All right, so anyway, also Manifest season two is still doing very strong viewership uh, as people are in, fans are anticipating that new season four, which doesn't have a release date yet, but it'll be made, it'll be made it's made exclusively for Netflix. Uh, Manifest is uh, uh, season one. Manifest is a show that Netflix saved, uh, and now they're bringing it ba back. They're going to continue it uh, exclusively for the streaming service. Then on iTunes, not too much going on here actually. It's still mostly entirely recent uh, releases, changing position based on you know price drops for there being a sale or finally going to six dollar rent, stuff like that. All right, as for this coming week, August fifth is an explosion of content. I don't know why every executive picked this date, but they did. So you're going to have, I'm curious, what are you going to prioritize? What are you going to watch right away? Uh, what are you going to save for a little bit later? But well, I mean, there's the whole month of August, man, but for some reason they all want this date. All right, so in theaters, you've got Bullet Train, Brad Pitt's Bullet Train, hoping to capitalize on that historically hot release date the first weekend of August. Although, <clears throat> some have died here. <laughs> so we'll see how it does. I think it looks great. Uh, the embargo lifts on Tuesday. Uh, Joe Coy's uh, East Easter movie? Uh, that comes out this weekend, too. We'll see how it does. Uh, it seems a little late because the holiday was a long time ago, but let's see. Uh, and wow, tons of streaming movies, too. Oh, my goodness. It's, a, it's an embarrassment of riches. You're, where are you going to click? Seriously, I want to know. The new Predator movie, Prey, hits Hulu. Ron Howard's all-star 13 Lives hits Amazon. I can't wait to watch that. And John Lasseter, of all people, tries to make a comeback with luck for Apple TV. I, I'm not very happy with what John Lasseter um, operated at, at, uh, at Disney. I thought, uh, Disney Pixar, I thought that he really did prey on women. Um, but I think that luck, you know, Maybe they shouldn't have made it clear. I mean, I don't think the general public knows that John Lasseter is associated with that. But I have thought that the trailers for Luck looked really legit. Uh, also on Friday, The Sandman drops on Netflix. Could be big. I'm working my way through the screeners right now. I can't review it until, for some reason, the embargo lifts when the show drops. And that makes it, that makes it seem like they don't have a lot of faith in the show. But I mean, I can't review it until then, but I, I think it's been, let's just say I think it's been very poorly advertised, and we'll see if it, it kind of explodes on Friday when it drops. And then the day before, Beavis and Butthead return on Paramount Plus, so uh, I'll be curious to see, uh, you know, what's stronger, Beavis and Butthead appeal or um, the lack of people who have Paramount Plus. But I think there's a, there's a, there's a ad-supported model for that service, so, you know, we'll see. And the star, a lot of you have it for Star Trek, so there could be an audience there. As for the rest of the week, Lightyear, as I said, hits Disney Plus at no extra cost on Wednesday. Season two of Reservation Dogs starts on Hulu on Wednesday with, I believe, the first two episodes. And also on Friday, The Outlaws from the UK is already at season two. You in the UK have already watched it, but it'll be dropping in the United States here on Amazon again on Friday. So that's this week's movie math. What have you been watching? What do you plan to watch? And what do you think of all the stories from today? DC Super Pets, Jordan Peele. 
that fascinating Nielsen Top 10 Originals chart, and more. Share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.